A story coming in through from Sammy McBolty, a one journalist coming in from the Daily Mail. <coughs> He's a senior football writer there, confirming to us that Arsenal are kept in the know of the Benjamin Sheshko transfer developments. Then we are going to be talking about Kim In Jae, who is really having struggles at Bayern Munich, and Timo Werner is also one of those players that is going to hate to say to it that his dream is coming in through to obviously return back to London and play in there for you. Rock and David is my name. It's the 29th of May 2024. Two days. Oh, sorry. It's the 30th. I'm sorry. It's the 30th of May 2024. And we are left with just one day to climax the month of May and then start June. June is going to be an action packed month. Remember the first day of June, Champions League football going to be played at Wembley. That is on a Saturday. Then later, we are going to be having the Euro start 13 days later in Germany as obviously the big teams take it on to where we deserve to be and we anticipate that the euro tournament is really gonna try to derail a little bit of the summer transfer windows because some teams will be like what if i sign a player and gets injured in the euros that's gonna be a very huge question and that's what they're gonna be really looking at a lot but we don't know how arsenal is gonna do it because slovenia a side that benjamin sheshko represents is gonna be playing in the euros and we're here to let you know what we think about benjamin sheshko how many likes 400 likes on this video and don't forget to subscribe you want to hit 22,000 subscribers and you know our total um our total target it's 40,000 subscribers before the end of the summer transfer window by the 1st of september i want us to be in a 40k family right 40k 50k that's where i want this channel to be and i know you guys are gonna make it happen right all right let's start it off with sammy mcbold in this tweet sorry in this post he put out onto his <coughs> ex account through a story that led us to the daily mail he told us that arsenal are, are being kept updated on developments over benjamin sheshko's future well bruno jim harris and douglas Luiz are among the club's central midfielders any moves for guimarez and Luis? uh any moves for Luis? Any moves for Bruno Gimares and Lewis, D, Douglas Lewis could depend on party leaving the club. Now, <clears throat> let's first tackle the Benjamin Sheshko scenario. Arsenal are being kept on developments over Benjamin Sheshko. You can even say they are being kept abreast of the situation of Benjamin Sheshko at RB Leipzig. Now, that shows you that Arsenal is interested in this striker. Why? If you are not interested in something, then why could you tell people responsible all people involved in it to keep you informed about it you understand why why that means Arsenal has what we call concrete interest in Benjamin Sheshko as I've always gone here to let you know that for me him and Ishak would have been the best two forwards that Arsenal should sign and the other player is really a wild card you know him I would go Broby so if Arsenal get Borobi or Benjamin Sheshko or Alexandra Ishak, that will be really a move in the right direction for the club of Arsenal. They would have gone here to do the needful to see that everything goes their way and they are being kept into the know. But teams like Manchester United, teams like Chelsea, Bayern Munich are also in the queue to sign this player. And what shows you that a player is that good? Who are people that you're competing with to obviously get the signature? for this player <clears throat> for example i told people last summer when Arsenal was going in for kai havertz that if a player is wanted by real madrid and bayern munich that shows you how good the player is you understand and if you're looking at a player alone <clears throat> that shows you that that player might obviously be outpriced or he might be talented and maybe his mentality is not right for big clubs but the moment you see that you are interested in a player and a queue of clubs is lining up to obviously go in for those players just get to know that player is really worth it and that's what comes in through for benjamin sheshko Bayern munich manchester united chelsea <coughs> are hugely interested in getting the signature of this player and to show you that he is really a special talent and RB Leipzig believe they can get more money out of him. They are trying to give him an improved contract. Just one season in, 
they are trying to give him an improved contract because they know they can sell him for 100 million euros in the summer of 2025 after he comes out and really performs well in the next season that is soon to start in August of 2024-2025. That is Benjamin Sheshko for you. So Arsenal have requested RB Leipzig to be kept abreast of the situation of Benjamin Sheshko. And you will obviously agree with me that teams like Chelsea are also talking to the agent of Benjamin Sheshko. And the agent of Benjamin Sheshko was seen at Emirates when Arsenal was playing against Chelsea. And everyone was asking, who was who was in contact with this guy? Because all these two teams are in London. Chelsea is in West London. Arsenal is in North London. Now, did he first have a chat with Chelsea? And then he came to North London to really hold talks with Chelsea, sorry, with Arsenal. As if it wasn't enough, he was seen at the game of Manchester United versus Arsenal at the Old Trafford, meaning that he had come to Manchester to obviously hold talks with the big gurus of Manchester United to say to it that they obviously give this deal a green light, meaning that the competition is really stiff. And now Benjamin Hua, sorry, Benjamin Sheshko has what we call a vast range of choices to make. Now, who is he going to choose? The Lord knows and them they know because they know how far this deal is and watch a lot Benjamin Sheshko into the Euros. And for the side of Arab Leipzig, they see this huge competition for this player as something they can leverage out close to 100 million euros next summer if they happen to keep him here and put out a buyout clause of 100 million euros. Now, his buyout clause this summer is 65 million euros and Arsenal are really tempting to pay it close to 56 million pounds. That's what is being called in for. But Arsenal want to know who is really making the move. Is Manchester United moving in fast? Is Chelsea moving in fast? Or Bayern Munich is moving in fast? You understand? That's what Arsenal are really in for. And we wait to see which striker is really going to be coming in at Arsenal. Because Roy Pala also confirmed to us, remember he's an invisible, played with Edu, the current sporting director of Arsenal. He fed us in on what Edu told him on the final game of the season. At Emirates, he told him that they are looking out for an out and out number nine. And that might be Benjamin Sheshko, Alexandra Ishak, Jokares, Broby, Zikhezi, Ivan Tony, Santiago Jimenez, Nemit, or Jokares. So we wait and see how that of Benjamin Sheshko is really going to go. He has also gone ahead and hit about, hinted about Douglas Lewis and um, Douglas Louise and um, Benjamin, D Douglas Louise and Bruno Gimares. For Bruno Gimares, I think I've done enough about him. Even yesterday night, I really climaxed my day with that story to this channel, and you guys went ahead to watch it hugely. So that is the stance of this side of Arsenal. The coming in of Douglas Louise or Bruno Gimares depends on Thomas Partey's decision. Is he going to be leaving the club of Arsenal? If Thomas Partey stays, if Thomas Partey is staying, there is no need to sign any of those two. But we all know that Partey has gone ahead to find himself unfit for the club of Arsenal. And Fabrizio Romano was like, Arsenal have made up their mind for Thomas Partey to leave. But remember, I brought you a story of Thomas Partey not wanting to leave the club of Arsenal. He's like, Arsenal has reached the harvesting level and they want to get me out. And for Arsenal, they're like telling Partey, if you are to stay here, you need to take a pay cut of like £100,000 and you need to cut your salary to £150,000. And I think that's going to be the factor that Patty has to look into because he hasn't been available every time Arsenal is going to hit to need him in these kind of games. So that's the domino effect and we are waiting to see what the results of that domino effect are going to be in the next one month. Because I tell you, by the mid of June, we'll be obviously getting to know who Arsenal is going to prioritize to sign as a striker, midfielder, left back, and right winger. Arsenal is set to sign four players plus David Raya on a permanent deal this summer transfer window. And many are going to be leaving onto this or from this club of Arsenal. And some are really going to be joining them as replacements and reinforcements into the club. So, Sammy Mikbal has gone ahead obviously tell us that. And I think I've gone ahead to grind everything to the fullest. 
If you haven't gone ahead to understand what I'm going to explain, the comment section is very wide open for you. Tell me your thoughts about what I'm going to say and we'll be here to obviously respond to you in a nick of time. Fabrizio Romano with an exclusive coming in through from Tottenham Hotspur, Timo Vana, Arabi Leipzig. He said, <coughs> Timo Vana, advance in talks to keep Timo, sorry, Tottenham Hotspur advance in talks to keep Timo Vana at the club for one more season, extending loan from RB Leipzig. New deal would be valid from July 2024 to June 2025 with same conditions of loan deal agreed in January. Vana now expected to stay at Tottenham Hotspur. So, what a huge move for Timo Vana. I think the manager believes in him a lot and um, he just needed to get a pre-season with Tottenham Hotspur. For those six months he had at Tottenham Hotspur, I think it was a pre-season and I think we should count his spell at Tottenham Hotspur with effect of next season of 2024-2025. You know, Timo Werner has come out to resurrect his career at Tottenham Hotspur. I think he had like three goals, I think four goals and three assists in the last half of the season and he's liked a lot by Ange Potsekeglu. And I know why he likes him. He's a modern pan. He's a modern player whose intensity is really undoubted. And he's really unselfish. He runs into propositions of really threatening the backline of the enemy. And I like the way he obviously thinks. His mentality is really elite. And he's like, Tottenham Hotspur might be the world to go. And I'm asking myself, what has gone ahead to stop Tottenham Hotspur from paying 17 million euros? Because this is the amount of money Spurs had to pay this summer to keep this guy. I think it's a bargain. To get in Timo Vana for 17 million euros, to me it's a bargain. Why didn't they go in for him? You know, I think they would have gone ahead to go in for him and obviously see how he does his job. Because Spurs this time around are going to be playing in Europe. That is in the UEFA Europa League and other three tournaments or domestic tournaments. The Premier League, the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup. But it's good to say to it that Timo Werner has gone ahead to be given a very huge goal to obviously face off with the side of Tottenham Hotspur next season and take their um, pursue of the title maybe to the next level. And might be one of those people to raise up to the occasion and really put the side of... Tottenham Hotspur to the match because if you're having players like Timo Van who can really average 15 goals a season and some 10 assists, that is really a very good um, that's really a very good advantage that you obviously have as a team of Tottenham Hotspur over other teams that you're going to be having what you call a vast squad but we wait and see when this is going to be sorry, when this gates um, when these gates are accomplished, I'll be the first person to come in and really tell you that it's a here we go. The loan deal of Timo Vana to Tottenham Hotspur is really through. Let me see. By the way, the Germany national team is this guy there. Vana. Euros. 2024. Has he been part of the team? Vana was hoping to get a call up for the Euros, but now is now focusing on a new season since he wants to stay in England. So, um, I think um, the Germany squad uh, Timo Vana is out. Yeah, he's not part of the squad of Germany that is going to be taking part in the Euros, meaning that he now has ample time to settle down, relax, kickstart of the season with his side of Tottenham Hotspur in the mid or after the Euros in July. Now, we are having this story coming in from the Bayern Munich, Bayern and Germany. It's known as Emir Samir. You understand? They've told us that Kim in J has not been called up for Korea's squad for the upcoming World Cup qualifiers. Kim Inja requested to be omitted from the list as his recent injury left ankle has not fully recovered, limiting his 
participation in normal training and games, said interim coach Kim Do Hoon. So, Kim In Jae has gone ahead to struggle a lot at Bayern Munich, I tell you. He has gone ahead not to have a very good debut season because the players that he had gone ahead to come to replace ended up being the players responsible to lead or play into that central defense partnership. Remember, Delete was seen as a player that couldn't obviously compete. That's why they went in for Kim In Jae. And uh, two calls ideal center back partnership was Upper Makano and um, Kim In Jae, but it costed him a lot of games and he decided obviously play um, Delete and he brought in Dyer. When he brought in Dyer, Dyer went ahead to put in a very huge shift and uh, Kim In Jae also got injured. And you remember that Kim In Jae was responsible for the equalizer that Real Madrid got when they are playing away at the Arians Arena. That is how bad he looked and it costed him the season. So he's like, I'm having an ankle injury. Let me rest and see to it that I wait for the right moment for my team. See to it that I really get up and running as a side of um, Kim In Jae into the team that he's playing for right now. That is Bayern Munich. Meaning that he's now committing himself for Bayern Munich and to see how he obviously kickstarts off his career with Vincent Company. And I think he now has a chance to obviously become better as the manager that is going to be managing his side of Bayern Munich is one of the most, you know, most experienced managers, you know, in as far as playing centre back is concerned. At uh, Bayern Munich, sorry, at Man City and at Belgium, he was also the captain for both national teams. That is Vincent Company for you, and I think Kimi J is gonna really learn a lot from Vincent Company. For why he really defended very well at the elite levels of football and how he should find himself turned into a better manager. That is it. Sorry, a better centre-back. So, he was one of those defenders that was supposed to come to Manchester United and went to Bayern Munich and I've gone here to see Manchester United fans celebrating that. Oh, we dodged the bullet. I tell them, no. No. There are very many players. Like, West Ham fans say, United have gone here to sign Mohamed Kudus. But it was written nowhere that Mohamed Kudus could really thrive at Manchester United. But look at how Anton has gone ahead to obviously flop at the club of Manchester United. So transfers are really tricky. But it comes out to our notice that Kim In Jae is a very good defender. United never dodged a bullet. And stopped always come out to make out conclusions that are really very early staged. Let him first play this second season. If at all he flops, then one will say he's a flop. Like you see Mason Mount at the club of Manchester United. I've come out to tell people that he's not a flop. He hasn't gone ahead to flop because he still has more time. And if the season we are going into of 2024-2025, Mason Mount fails to thrive, then I'll start to call him a, a flop. So, your thoughts on to Arsenal? Kept in the know of Benjamin Sheshko's transfer development? In the comment section below, Bruno Gimares, Douglas Luiz, depending on Pate's departure, meaning that if at all Pate stays, these two, none of the two will come in throughout Arsenal. Then, talk of Timo Vanna, transfer stains, and obviously Kim In Jay out of the national team. Rock and David is my name. I sign out for now. See you later and I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ and may the living to God bless you abundantly. Rock and David is giving you a five finger salt to everyone watching in and don't do what you wouldn't like to do. May the living to God bless you. Bye bye and ciao ciao.